I wanted a really fun way to kick off the podcast again, and I just got back from Big Dogs, and it was a blast. I mean, it was really great to get out and see everybody in a room again. Everybody was very excited about that. The partners were excited. There was a lot of cool stuff that came from it. But one thing that I wanted to do was kind of be able to pull some folks out and sit them down with some microphones and just have them record a shorter podcast, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And during the conference, we actually announced a partnership with Infiot for SD-WAN. And so Prog Tkori, who's the CEO of Infiot, sat down with Eric Heinrich. They had about a 10-minute conversation, covered a lot of the details that were in there. And it was awesome because I had a front row seat to it. I just got to sit uh, back and hit record and, and listen in on the conversation. So I wanted to get this one out first and give you guys the first glimpse of it, the first listen. Um, if you want the video format of it, it's on YouTube. But... I think you'll enjoy it. Check it out, and uh, there's going to be more to come. So enjoy it. Hi, so this I'm Eric Heinrich, Senior Director, Partnerships at Ruckus, and I'm joined today with uh, Prague Takor, the CEO and founder of Infiat. So um, Prague. Just uh, first to start with, you know, you have a lot of experience in the industry. You've been around here in Silicon Valley um, in the tech industry for some time with a focus on uh, various different networking technologies in particular. I am curious to learn a little bit around um, what you're seeing right now as some of the trends going on in the industry, uh, perhaps around SD-WAN, SASE, uh, those sorts of things. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. And thanks for the opportunity. Um, if you look at like general trend, um, you know, we live the life of Gen 1, you can call it even Gen 0 as DWAN, which was MPLS. And right. the way to think of MPLS networks is it's like a one-to-one -one connectivity, wherein there's a branch office which connects back to the data center. Now, SD-WAN came in and there are a lot of SD-WAN vendors out there, which kind of brought in this one-to-many connectivity is what I call it. So think of the same branch office now connecting back to the data center is now also connecting back to the cloud. And people had these big fat devices which are being deployed in the branch offices and being managed from the cloud. And in a general trend, what started happening is this one-to-one -one connectivity went to one-to-many with SD-WAN. And now we are seeing borderless WAN. And with borderless WAN, what has happened is there are no borders and the connectivity has become many-to-many. -many. So think of people working from home, think of IoT devices, think of micro branches, think of multi-cloud, edge is everywhere and there are no perimeters. So what I call as the trend moving from MPLS, which was like a two to $3 billion market, moved into SD-WAN, which was a five to $6 billion market. But this whole concept of many-to-many -many connectivity is at least a 12 to $15 billion market, right? And that is what we are seeing out there. Like how do you extend the same level of experience security to this many-to-many -many connectivity world, which is the borderless WAN? Yeah, that's a, it's it's an interesting uh, comment that you say. You know, uh, such a large market indicates that there's clearly a demand and a need for the solutions, right? Um, in particular, what we've been seeing, you know, this work from home, this shift. Uh, that's that's a great example, right, of the the one to many and many to many uh, type of environment where uh, connectivity is critical. Yeah. Uh, securing that connectivity is critical, right? Um, so, so what challenges do these trends present that you're seeing in the market, right? So. Uh, what are the types of challenges that these these other companies who provide some of these things running into and what are the customers looking for? Yeah, so if you look at in general the edge networking market, it's pretty fragmented at, the, at, at this moment. You have SD-WAN vendors and there are well-known SD-WAN vendors out there who are doing SD-WAN and branch office deployments. And then you come to remote access connectivity and there are vendors who focus on remote access connectivity. Both of these worlds don't talk to each other. You need two different head ends, two different infrastructures, two different policy managers. If you want to say something as simple as Zoom is high priority or Office 365 is a high priority application, you can do it in the branch, but you cannot do that on a remote access client. So the point being that the user is the same. So if I, as a user, move from a branch office to a cafe, to a home environment, I should be carrying the same level of security, the same level of performance, no matter where I am as an end user. And on top of it, you will see connectivity through cellular vendors. So we'll get into deployments where there is a SD-WAN deployment. And then on top of it, you will get another vendor to deploy cellular adapters in the network. So again, mm -hmm. this is yet another point of fragmentation. 
and then you have a slew of multi-cloud vendors doing just the multi-cloud piece. So if you think of four pieces of jigsaw puzzles wherein you have SD-WAN, you have remote access, you have uh, the multi-cloud and you have the cellular connectivity, this is a fragmented world, right? And that is what Infiord is trying to solve. We wanted to build this one software, like all in one, where you can get this consistent security, consistent performance across these different use cases. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned that um, you have these multiple different components, right, that you're delivering, these features you're delivering. And then what pulls them all together, ultimately, is, is going to be a key, right? Because as you say, you have these different fragmented types of things, something that needs to pull them all together. So so what is the solution that uh, that Infiat is really looking to, to to bring to solve some of these challenges? Yeah, so to realize this vision, it was interesting. We had to build a portfolio of products on our end. So for example, we have an Infiat Extensible Edge, which is one of the examples is right here on the table, which is like a micro branch work from home environment. It has built in Wi-Fi. Uh, we have medium size appliances. We have large size appliances that can go in a branch or a data center. We have Infiat Zito client, which has exactly the same functionality, but running as a software form factor. We have a cellular gateway functionality, which replaces all the cellular vendors out there. And you can use Infiot cellular gateway. And on top of it, we have something we call as cloud services fabric. So if you are trying to send traffic to a well-known cloud application, you don't need to host your own head ends. You can use one of the head end pops from Infiot, right? So it all comes in together in a single pane of glass, single policy that can manage the entire infrastructure. On top of it, you need an underlying principle, what we call as Zito. So Zito is zero trust plus optimization. One of the big market gaps that we saw was a lot of the SD-WAN vendors will talk about optimization, but zero trust is lacking. That means the identity aware access is lacking in these systems. On the other hand, you have remote access clients that have identity-based access. They have the zero trust features, but they lack optimization, right? So what we wanted to do, this word Zito is very powerful. Zero trust plus optimization is the software principle, and it applies across our architecture. Again, it will apply on uh, from the users working at home to a cafe, to a branch office, to a multi-cloud environment. It's exactly the same software running everywhere. So in this, in, in this kind of a scenario, um, where does the identity come from or the policy itself come from? Uh, maybe you can share a little bit about how that ties yeah, in. Yeah, sure. So that's where we have done some really good tight integrations with Ruckus on their cloud path product. Uh, so, uh, we have other vendors that we interoperate with as well. But what we have done here is a tight integration with Ruckus. So a lot of the identity information is already inside the Cloud Path product and we can honor those attributes. So if you're creating your QoS policies or security policies, we'll, we'll honor those policies based on identity of the user. So for example, if I'm a sales user accessing sales applications, I'll get access to those applications, but I'll not get access to maybe engineering applications, right? right? Or if I'm an engineering user, I should get access to only those apps that I should be accessing. So those, those policies have to run down onto the edge device or onto our clients. But again, we tie deeply into Ruckus's cloud path product for, to make it work end to end. Yeah, like peanut butter and jelly, they go yes. better together. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So um, just a final question here before we wrap up. Um, I'm curious uh, in terms of how this is then delivered to the customer, right? Um, to, a, to an end user, an enterprise who wants to use this service. Um, is this something they, that they have to manage in-house? Uh, are there other oppor you know, options to how they might manage this? Um, yeah, so you, yeah, we have a set of uh, managed service providers and that's actively growing, right? And we've obviously signed up TDCNX as well on that front, on the MSP side. So they can procure these services from managed service providers. We have a full as a service model as well in addition to that. So the end customers do sign up with us. So uh, we have a list of um, good set of end customers that we have built right now who will be publicly referenceable as well. Uh, but yeah, it will be delivered as a service and it can come from MSP or if they have a lean IT team, they can self-manage it as well. And one more very last last question. Um, a couple ideas of maybe t types of customers, right? W what are the ideal types of customers or maybe some customers that you've worked with uh, who've had a really good successful deployment and what benefits have they seen? Sure, I'll talk about some referenceable accounts. For example, we have AT Still University. Uh, they deployed it for their work from home users. And then come three or four months, they just said, hey, can I get a larger version of this box? 
in my university in my sites so, they're so expanding they it. are expanding it so the use case started with one use case and it kind of expanded into universities uh, we have uh, pdc energy for instance we started with their executives who are working from home it actually got an, expanded to their connected trucks so we have little one of this device inside their trucks as we speak so we want all of their trucking sites and now we are going to be deployed we are discussing deployments in their oil wells and also for their remote users so the benefit here is you can get one converged architecture right you can start with one place as a specific use case that is your current pain point and then you can slowly go and disperse other use cases across the enterprise oh that's fantastic well thank you very much for sharing all the information with us today uh, I, I learned a lot and uh, and we're really fortunate to have you and to share this information with all of us. So thank you very much. Thank you and thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.